Hello and welcome to Software to See from Festo. In this video, you will see how you can integrate a Festo server drive into a Festo PLC program. This is an example project I have prepared with a PLC, a remote I.O., and two server drives. And the server drives have already been commissioned, that is, the drive configuration is complete and all the parameters are set up such that if I connect to the device, I can do some testing here and execute some movements and see if everything is okay mechanically and regarding the parameterization of the drive, right? So the parameters for the drive itself are okay so far. And now what I want to do is start motion tasks from the PLC program. So let's disconnect from the drive and go back to topology editor. And the first thing I usually do is I assign the drive a speaking name like for example, axis Y, and that one here might be axis Z. Next, I set up the EtherCAT connections, and I do so by drawing lines from the EtherCAT connectors of the devices. And I do this in the same order as the devices are wired on EtherCAT. So that's my first device, that's the second, and that's the third. Well, let's go to the PLC program. In the navigator on the left-hand side, you can see that below the EtherCAT master, the devices have already been added to the Codesys program. Now for integrating the drive, there are different possibilities. You can use PLC open function blocks, and there is also a text-based approach where you access methods directly. And I will start with a letter. So let me first create a EOU, and I choose structure text here. And for addressing the drive, all I need to do is now type in the device's name. And as soon as I type the dot, you see that all the available methods and properties are listed here. So what I could do now is do a reset, for example. And that's it. This will reset any errors on the device. And similarly to that, triggering a motion task would be axis y dot move absolute, for example. And here I can work in physical units. My drive is set up to millimeters, so if I want to trigger a positioning to say 200 millimeters, I would type in move absolute 200, say 0.4 millimeters, right? And the velocity might be 200 millimeters per second, and acceleration, say 2000, and so on, right? What is important to keep in mind when working that way is that I'm calling methods here, which are supposed to be called only once, not cyclically. So what I typically would do is call such a method and wait until the method has been completed by checking the equivalent property. Let me quickly show you what I mean. And this is how a sequencer might look like. In step zero, first reset the drive, then wait until the access error property has been reset. Enable the drive in the same step, proceed to checking and waiting until the drive has been enabled and so on. Okay, let's call that little program and download the code into the PLC. Now let's see what happens if I start my little sequencer here. And if I trigger the start command, you can see that the sequencer is stepping through the individual steps. And if I switch over to the CMMT plugin, You can see the effect of the sequencer. The drive is now changing between different positions. So that was the first possibility. Text-based approach, direct access to methods which are provided by the driver block that is automatically inserted in the PLC program. If you prefer to work with PLC open function blocks, that's possible too. I'm showing that using continuous flowchart. And when the drive was added to my PLC program, it automatically included all the necessary libraries. So all I need to do now is call the PLC open function blocks I want to use, like MC Power, for example. And I need to choose the ones with the suffix Festo. Those are the ones related to point-to-point -point movements, which I want to execute now. The access reference object I provide, well, the access name. And that's it, there we go. 
let me remove my sequencer from before. And now I log into the PLC by pressing Alt F8. Just like in Codesys, you can use Alt F8 for connecting and Control F8 for disconnecting. Hop over to my PLC open program. And first of all, enable the drive. Now let's see if we can trigger our motion task. I'm providing the position again in millimeters. My velocity, acceleration, deceleration, jerk, and that's it. Let's go. And here on the MC read actual position festo function block, you can see the current position. Let's just go back to say 10 millimeters. There we go. And this is all I have to do. I don't have to add a library to my program or set up variables and map them to process data and all this stuff. This is all being taken care of automatically as soon as I draw the line between the PLC and the drive in topology editor. This was a video about how to integrate a Festo drive into a Festo PLC in Festo Automation Suite. If you like the videos, please subscribe to our channel and keep yourself informed. See you next time and bye bye.